All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. I have a very exciting video for you guys today. So I have a Conor McGregor video. I mean, shocker. I thought of a reason to make a video about Conor McGregor. But in this case, this is actually, uh, I, I had a pretty strong insight today. And like, like about Conor's career, about his current career, about his, his career up until now, how that affects going forward. And like, uh, like a, a huge like factor relating to how to analyze Connor in his current state and his go forward that I'm I'm shocked I hadn't come to that realization until now. I mean, I'll be honest. It is incredibly insightful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys that preview right now. I was very impressed with myself when it hit me. I was like, man, I can't believe I hadn't thought of that. To the guys or the people watching this who have been offering like help with thumbnails, you know, with intros, all that stuff. Thank you guys so much, man. Like, honestly, that is... I, like if you think that I'm just one of these guys, it's like, <laughs> hey, hey, random fan. Sure, yeah, whatever. Go ahead, do some work for me for free. That is not how I interpret these things. I am very, very grateful for even the offer. Much less if you guys are actually, you know, producing something and taking the time. You know, I got Will Page offering to do a intro. I got Muhammad M who is doing some thumbnails. You guys should probably tell the difference because a couple of them that I've had recently are pretty good compared to the shit ones that I do. Uh, he did a, actually, what do you guys think of this logo? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have Will Page give his, give a run of the logo because I don't know. He's a professional designer. And I just feel like I, like, I need something that's just bold. Bold. So I'll tell you guys a true story. Like uh, when I was running Major League Fantasy or actually when I'm running my supplement company or basically anything that I've ever done where I needed something designed, uh, I have a I have a guy who I use for my design stuff. I, to be honest with you, I have no idea why I have never hit him up about this. As a matter, yeah, I do actually because I asked him and he, for some reason, he he always says yes to things that are like for like my company brands. But like with stuff where I'm like doing social media, he's just kind of like, ah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I don't know how he thinks he's above it or he thinks I suck at this. I don't know, but either way. Um, but the way that I would tell him, like he would always give me his first draft design and my, my feedback would always be put a gold chain on it. And that meant like, you know, make it a little more flashy. <laughs> Throw a gold chain on that design guy. Anyway, so appreciate you guys very much um all right so let's talk about this connor thing the longest intro ever so connor and all right so so this is the this is the realization that i had okay relating to connor connor's career so if you look at connor mcgregor's career right he has two losses and i am going to throw out a hypothesis about those two losses that that there is something that is in common between those two losses that is nothing to do with the matchups, nothing to do with anything. Now, obviously, there is a position to take where it's just like, look, these these were the Nate Diaz one taking it two weight classes up on two weeks notice. He gets a pass for that. I mean, of course, that makes perfect sense. And the Khabib one, it's fucking Khabib, potentially the greatest fighter of all time, much less certainly at this point, probably the most dominant. Well, yeah, the most dominant 155 pound fighter of all time, you know? So, yeah, I, I might be stretching here, but just hear me out. So one thing that I realized is that every time that Connor has performed well, which is every other fight, his back has been against the wall in a major way, okay? Like a major way. If you think through every other fight of his, if he didn't win, it was going to be hugely damaging, okay? Especially especially if you think about the cowboy fight, all right? Like I, people, the more that I thought about this today, the more I realized people are not giving him enough credit for that fight. Like there, I, I, I realize, you know, Cowboy's a cherry picked opponent. Cowboy had lost, you know, two in a row to Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson. But, and then, you know, he lost, and then after Connor, he lost a, you know, a, I thought he, that's a draw, right? Cowboy and, uh, and Anthony Pettis, but like, I get why people are looking at him, they're like, so what, Connor beat him. Okay, but again, if Connor loses that fight, it's not just his career, his life is fucking over. Like, not like over, but he he's in a hole at that point that would be so massive to dig out of. Like, so let me actually rewind. 
you look at every fight that he had coming up in the UFC, okay? Like, if his goal was to be what he visualized, which it was, that was the whole, he was seeing where he was going the whole time. If he loses any of those fights along the way, the vision that he had for his future goes away, right? He, if he loses any of those fights, any of them, the, the, the vision that he is chasing goes away. So, and he, he performs incredible in every single one. Win, 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 win. And, and like in, in annihilation dominant fashion, except Chad Mendes, which by the way, he had his back against the wall, but that's a replacement fighter where he didn't have time to properly prepare for him. And, you know, kind of a bad matchup still knocks him out when his back is against the wall. Cause if he loses, hype trains over, whatever, knocks out Chad Mendes. Then Jose Aldo, all the shit in the world. This is, this is the moment where he's going to attain everything that he's been chasing back against if, if aldo exposes him the conor mcgregor hype trains over and he starches him in 13 seconds right then nate diaz fight and he loses on that on the two weeks notice in the comeback fight in the next one his back is against the wall he has to win that fight losing to nate diaz once is one thing on a two week having a full training camp it's a rematch if he loses again two consecutive losses to the same opponent that is a very, very big deal. Back against the wall wins, right? Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez is the only one. No, I take it back, actually, because his vision from the beginning was to be the two belt champion. So Eddie Alvarez is another one that's standing in his way to get to the vision that he is trying to attain. So, yeah, I mean, the only reason it looked a little bit is because he had already attained superstardom by then. But... Eddie Alvarez stands in the way of what his goal was, right? He has to win that fight to attain the goal that he's chasing. So if he loses, it derails the whole thing. And he wins, okay? So up until that point, he only has one fight that he lost, and it's the one where his back wasn't really against the wall. Like, it didn't really matter that much in the first fight against Nate Diaz. If he lost, what? that's not part of his journey, right? Winning the 155-pound belt is, is part of his ultimate vision that he's chasing, right? Win the belt at 145, win the belt at 155, be the first two division champ. There had never been a champ champ before then. I think that's the first time I ever said champ champ because I don't like cliche fucking terms like that if I didn't coin them. Anyway, so he wants to be the very first one. So one exception to being on that journey and he lost that fight. Then he did the most man gangster shit ever, takes an immediate rematch and, and recovers, right? Here's the thing. So, like I said, the cowboy fight, if ever there was a fight where his fight was against, where, where his back was against the wall, it's the cowboy fight. Because he had gotten all the way there, right? He, he had won both championships. He had launched, he had fought Floyd Mayweather, made $100 million. He's launched his whiskey brand, right? He has tons of money. And then he's, you know, I mean, Connor, he's, he's, he's living like, you know, like now he's, he's attained everything. He gets filmed punching this old guy, right? And everything he's built is falling apart, right? He's already he's lost his belt to Khabib. He forfeited his belt at 140 at 145. And now that he punched that guy, I mean, I haven't seen the stats because it's a private company, but listen, I don't need to see the stats to tell you 1000% that in that moment after sexual assault, you know, accusation, the the slapping the Bellator guy, smashing the phone, smashing the dolly through the window, getting his ass kicked by Khabib, and then finally, ultimately culminating with him punching that old man on tape. I am telling you, the proper 12 sales plummeted. I promise you that. I promise you that. Like he's, so he had literally lost everything. And, and it's, I guarantee no matter how much money he had made, he, I don't think he's looking at a huge rack in the bank, right? So when proper 12, you know, starts to implode, he is literally looking at every single thing that he's done imploding. And the cowboy fight is the thing that is going to kick all of it back. It's like he's going to give him everything back. And he ha But if he loses, he's done. He's fucking done. Okay. If he goes in there and he loses to cowboy, to cowboy, right? The fact that cowboy was a handpicked, you know, kind of opponent that everyone thinks he, he should probably beat, that actually puts the pressure even more on him. He had to win that fight. Like, had to win that fight. If he loses that fight, his life is fucking over. It's a complete and total derail. A complete and total derail. And obviously, he decides, he annihilates Cowboy and he doesn't get enough credit for that. He does not get enough credit because he didn't just beat Cowboy. He made him look like he wasn't even fucking there. Like, Connor eats pressure, dude. He eats pressure. 
He walked through Cowboy. Like he literally was a fucking teenager that shouldn't have even been in the same octagon as him. Now, rewind. What's the only other fight that I haven't talked about? That is the other loss. And I'm saying, I'm making a point about his back being against the wall. The Khabib fight, okay? So I think that most people if from the outside in looking at it would say, well, no, the Khabib fight's the biggest one of all of them. It's the, it's the biggest pay-per-view ever. Think of the hype going into that fight, man. His back was against the wall. No, it wasn't. That's not true. That's not true. Because like I said, every other fight was leading to a goal that he had set for himself, which was his guiding light. Okay, he, ne- he clearly never, his, his guiding light was never defend the belt. It was never become a champion and defend the belt over and over and over. He's an accomplishments guy. He's a win the belt, win another belt, go fight Floyd Mayweather, come back, you know, win a belt in another division, right? Or like, oh, take two years off, come back, win two belts when I come back. Like that's his deal. He's not, he never set out to be a get, get the belt and defend the belt guy. That's not ever what his goals were. And Khabib, the fight meant nothing. As in the grand scheme for Connor's vision, the fight did not mean anything because it's a belt he already won. Like he he had already won the belt, right? The the hype around it was created. Like Connor manufactured that entire thing. Like you guys realize that, right? Like, you know, like so yeah, Artem said some shit on uh, you know, on Russian TV. And I also wanted to bring that up that, you know, I think that the reason why Khabib went after Artem, uh, because really, I mean, what did Artem say? He says, I think Connor's a real champion because he fights through injuries and Khabib's the one who pulls out of fights. I mean, you know, I'm paraphrasing. I think the reason why why Khabib went after him the way that he did, well, two reasons. Number one is because Artem's Russian. I think that I think Khabib is one of those guys like where, uh, it's, gosh, it's a terrible term I was about to use. I was about to say the term race trader, <laughs> and that has an incredibly negative connotation, but you get the idea, right? He's Russian and he's, and you know, Khabib is Russia and, and you're, you're going on TV and you're questioning Khabib, and especially you guys know Khabib's personality now, you're questioning Khabib's heart on Russian television and you're Russian. Like, I, I actually don't think that that had anything to do with Connor directly when, when Khabib, did, well, that's not true. I think part of it was just that he's Russian and he's calling him out on Russian TV. The other part is that I think that Khabib is sneaky, way better at hyping fights than people give him credit for. I think he comes off like he's like, you know, listen, I, you know, I just want to train. I just want to, you know, have a respectful fight. I want to trade shirts with Justin Dustin Poirier after the fight. You know, that's, that's how I want to do it. I think underneath that, that he, I think he is sneaky good at at hyping fights at building fights think about this okay before before the the real the real beef ever happened between khabib and connor and artem or any of that stuff happened after he won his fight on that same card that connor was on he said he said you know he's like oh god i'm gonna i'm gonna butcher the numbers ireland you know ireland 30 million people russia you know 500 million or something like that you know he's like he called out he, he said russia versus ireland after his fight, before all the, you know, he knows how to, like, that's, he, that, I mean, that's him directly calling out Connor and his entire country, because he knows Connor is, Connor represents Ireland. So he calls out Ireland's entire country, right? That's a sharp, that's a sharp move, man. Khabib is very smart, okay? That's, that's the other thing. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about this Gaethje thing with, with Connor um, and the difference between Gaethje and Khabib, because it, like, Again, Khabib doesn't look like he's someone who goes out and hypes fights. Gaethje really isn't a guy that goes out and hypes fights. He's, he's not. Khabib pretends to not be, but he is. Think about the Tony Ferguson uh, press conference. When Khabib got mad, he got mad at him because Tony Ferguson said he got in street fights. Come on, man. I mean, I get it that like, you know, English is Khabib's second language, but he's not, he wasn't actually mad. He's not actually mad. He's doing an excellent job hyping the fight. And then he kicks his and then he kicks his belt off the stage. He's he's hyping the fight. He's building the fight. The guy came to play, man. He's a champion in every sense of the word. So, you know, Khabib. The point I'm trying to make is Khabib is excellent at, at hyping fights. And as it relates to the Connor fight, Connor manufactured the entire thing, and Khabib was a perfect dance partner to play along and and play that role. 
So the, the fight was huge for Khabib, huge for Khabib, because Khabib did want to become the champion and did want to defend and did want to clear out the division. That's his vision. Okay, that's his, that's Khabib's vision. And Connor made it personal on every level. And, you know, when I'm saying like, you know, oh, you know, English is Khabib's second language. And so he's kind of pretending about the street fight thing. Let me tell you what he's not pretending about. Okay. From a cultural standpoint, they really do fight in the street, right? Like there, there are things you cannot say out there. Like you're going to like, it's not like America where people go, blah, 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 blah. You know, like you run your mouth, you fight, you know, like you run your mouth, you fight. And there's certain things you just, you don't take shit from people. Connor, Connor said too much, like that fight was massive for Khabib, gigantic for Khabib. And for Connor, he did, like, Khabib had everything on the line. Connor didn't have shit on the line. The only thing Connor had on the line is I talked a bunch of shit. And, you know, if I lose, I, you know, I talked a bunch of shit, I didn't back up. He still has, still has proper 12. And honestly, half the reason he took that fight was to hype and, and you know, launch proper 12. Still has proper 12. He still was the first champ champ. He still has, you know, money forever. And he didn't lose anything as it relates to his vision for what he wanted from his career. So it's the only, only two fights where he lost. He didn't have his back against the wall. Okay. And the reason why I bring this up is because I can't see a way where he has his back against the wall ever again. Right. Like, I mean, and, and maybe this is a hypothesis that doesn't hold water. Maybe I'm just, you know, I'm, I, I found an angle and I can make a fucking, you know, an insightful video that doesn't really have anything to do with Connor's psychological makeup. But what I do know is that Connor eats pressure. The more pressure you put on him, the better he does. And I'm trying to think of a scenario where going forward, he has a bunch of pressure. The only thing I could see is him fighting for the 170 pound belt. That's the only thing I could see where he would really have like if he won the accomplishment would be so tremendous that it would create that same type of environment for him but like a fight with Gaethje I mean I just I don't know I mean I I, I mean I think from so I guess this is a good segue right but first the only thing I can see for him where it would create that level of environment is a rematch with Khabib but because now he's lost to Khabib and now he has something to prove but even still, that is not the same. Like, if he has a, a, a shot at the 170-pound belt, that's the one. That's the one that creates the same environment. A fight with Gaethje is not that. But now I'm going to talk about that because I think that it is very possible that he ends up fighting Gaethje. So here's the deal. So like I was saying about Khabib, when when you got Connor and, and Khabib, they're going to fight. And, you know, a lot of this is hype, but they really do hate each other. I mean, you can see it in Connor. I... I you could see it in in the way that he like like O'Malley said that Connor took it personally with Khabib and everyone can see it, everyone can see it. So not I mean Con, like Khabib is literally the worst matchup for Connor in every single category, right? Like he is his kryptonite in, in in terms of X's and O's, and he's also he's in Connor's head. How is that possible? Connor's in everyone's head, and Khabib is in Connor's head. So the point I'm trying to make with that though is that that's not an accident, right? Khabib is really fucking smart. Like, Khabib is really smart. Like, he comes out, you know, he's got his principles, and he lives his life the way that he does, and he lives by the code, etc. but he's really smart. He's really fucking smart. So when Connor's trying to play the boo game on him, he knew exactly what Connor was gonna do, he prepared for it mentally, he reacted exactly the correct way, which probably to everybody else seemed just like, oh, this is the stoic Russian and this is how he would react to anyone. I am telling you, I guarantee you it's more calculated than that. I guarantee you it's more calculated than that. He knew exactly what he was gonna do, you know, send me location, send me location, you know, and we fight there. And then, I mean, I, I that's a, whatever, I'm not gonna go through the entire fucking buildup, but, I believe Connor that, that Khabib is being more calculated than people give him credit for. Gaethje ain't that, okay? Uh, if you were gonna describe Gaethje and his positive qualities, right? Or I was going to, I would say workhorse, loyal, good heart, absolutely fucking unquestionable, courage, skill, and again, work ethic, okay? What do you not see in those right there, okay? 
fuck, I, uh, I don't want to say this and insult him because I, I really like Gaethje, but I don't think of Gaethje as like an, a, an, a highly intelligent, like emotionally intelligent guy like Khabib or Connor or me. What's up? You like how I throw myself in there? You like that? I'll put, I'll put my fucking EQ up there with anybody, okay? Why do you think I have this fucking channel? Because I can read these guys and, you know, do this. But Gaethje has a good heart, right? So I'm not saying, he, like, you know, there's a difference between emotional intelligence. Like, like he has an, the guy wants to do social work, right? He wants to be a social worker when he's done. Obviously, he has a good heart. But I'm talking EQ where he can read opponents, really think through what's going to get under their skin, etc. Like, he's not a strategist like that. And as it relates to that, he's vulnerable. He's vulnerable to the boo game. I'm telling you right now, Connor will we, he will get inside Gaethje's head before that fight. If they have even a moderately traditional buildup to this fight where Connor gets to you know, be in the vicinity. I mean, listen, if it's done during COVID and Connor doesn't get to, they don't get to do press conferences and, and Connor's kind of relegated to talking shit through Twitter or, you know, in like these kind of like Zoom calls, then he won't be able to do it. But if they have, if they have traditional buildup where they have press conferences and stuff, I'm telling you, Connor will get inside Gaethje's head. I promise you that. I promise you. And and if you look at Gaethje, like, you know, Gaethje fan would go, what are you talking about? All these guys try to get in Gaethje's head. Like, and, and he knocked them all out. True, very true. And they all tried to do it the exact same way. And they were just total fucking dicks to him, right? Like they're like James Vick. He's just like, you know, like James, that, that build that was like, let's see, like this is like a masterclass of what not to do going into a fight. All you're doing is making people not like you and hope that he knocks you out. Like, I mean, yeah, you punch your own dog. You punch like, I mean, First of all, don't ever call a fighter punch drunk, okay? Let me just actually just lay that out there. If you are a professional fighter who has been blessed and found my channel, let me school you on something real quick, okay? Don't ever call another fighter punch drunk, especially not one that you're fighting, okay? That is not something that's going to reflect well on you. Or, like, Because the second that you call them punch drunk, then immediately people are like, well, wait, now you're volunteering to go hit this guy? Like, he's punch drunk? Like, he already he already has, like, you know, everyone, fight fans, no matter what, everyone is sensitive to, to you know, the damage people take in brain injuries, especially. And they've seen the end result of fighting fighters' careers, right? Like, they, we've seen Mark Coleman stumbling around, seen Eddie, you know, uh, Freddie Roach, like, you know, a million guys like that. You know, Muhammad Ali, tons of guys who took too many shots. It's a serious fucking thing. It's a serious consequence of this sport. Okay, don't say you're punch drunk. Oh, and by the way, I'm volunteering to go punch you in the face and try to knock you out. Like that doesn't reflect bad on them. It reflects bad on you. So keep that shit out of your shit talk vernacular. Okay, that's a, I mean, it's a, that is a, that is a lose every time insult. But uh, James Vick called, yeah, I think fucking called him the, the Homer Simpson of MMA. And then, you know, and then Gaethje, you know, starched him in the first. And uh, Michael Johnson, same type of deal. You're like, oh, you inbred motherfucker. Like, they're just mean. Like, they're, like that's I, both the, the buildups for those fights just made me hate Michael Johnson and never feel bad for him when he started getting knocked out all the time. And James Vick, I just was like, wow, I hope this guy gets knocked out. Like, and he did. That's not the kind of game that Connor's going to run on him. Okay. I, I don't know exactly what he's going to do, but I promise you he's going to run a game on him. And I promise you, okay. I can't tell you exactly the way in, but I can read Gaethje well enough to tell you that he absolutely is vulnerable to a mental game. Like, just, I, I promise you he is, because you'll be able to get him mad. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. He, you, can, you can tell by how he talks about guys, like in interviews, that he like genuinely like dislikes guys sometimes. Like when he was talking about, you know, Jorge Masvidal, he's like, go knock this idiot calling himself street Jesus. And like, if you watch him, he like, he's like angry. Like he like really doesn't like him, you know, like, and he really doesn't like Connor, but not in a way that's going to help him fight. Like, and I don't know how to explain that better. Like with, with James Vick and, and Michael Johnson, he's quiet. He lets them talk shit. And then he goes and buries them with guys where he genuinely like, really like, I'm telling you, that's, he, it's not going to work well, especially with Connor. Like Connor will, Connor will tap into that, 
and he'll fuck with him and he'll get a mental edge there. But also X's and O's, Connor's gonna knock fucking Gaethje out, in my opinion, if he's even moderately, you know, near the the Connor that fought Cowboy. I mean, plain and simple. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to finish this thing off. If you like the content, subscribe, ring the bell. Love you guys, thank you guys so much. Peace.